welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I'm going to be doing a bit of unboxing and discussion. As you can see here, and you can probably read, I've got a vacuum pump and a vacuum chamber. So, what's this all about, you might be asking? Well, it's actually double duty, if you will. So, uh, one of the things I want to do is get into some resin casting. Uh, I've been following Eric Stebel, who is an industrial designer, also a Michigander and he does a lot of resin casting and I find it very interesting so I've got the vacuum former uh, I want to be able to make molds do resin casting and that kind of stuff and one of the things you need is a vacuum chamber but the other interesting thing I want this for is filament drying so I've done a lot of homework on drying filament I've been doing a lot with nylon lately and for those that work with nylon that stuff absorbs water like a sponge so I want to try um, uh, vacuum drying the filament and this is one of the reasons I sprung and I got the five gallon chamber so both for the resin coating as well as I can put a lot of this filament in here so let's go ahead let's start with the unboxing let's get this out and I'll talk a little bit more now I'm gonna give you guys a heads up this is probably gonna be at least a two-parter so in this episode I just want to get this unboxed some basic discussions uh, second episode we'll fire this up I'm going to show you in a little bit more detail why I think this is the uh, best way to go for drying filament. And then we'll dry some filament and see how it works. So uh, let's go ahead and liberate these from their Chinese boxes. Hey, welcome back we've completed the unboxing we have everything out this is what you get now as I mentioned before I opted for the five gallon bucket and the reason I did that is I'll show you guys is look at the size of this thing I mean this is huge and it's heavy so um, hopefully you can see in there so I can probably fit four to five spools in inside this container so this is a big container. There wasn't a huge price difference between this and I think the three gallon. So I just opted for the, the big one. Uh, so we have the gauge set up. It does come separately. And the hookup is uh, basically by radiator clamps to here to this barbed end, which uh, the barbed end is formed into the valve. So make sure I get it in here. Um, so you have to go that way or replace the valve. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to try, uh, set this down, because this has a coupler. I'm not sure the size of the coupler, but it looks like I can probably get an air compressor fitting in there. And then on the pump over here, it's uh, I'll put uh, a connector, and so I'll be able to quick connect this so I can disconnect the two without you know having a bunch of rigmarole because as it stands right now the way that this is set up is this will be permanently attached to the top and so you'll have that I'm not quite sure what this is for just to sit in the bottom to to separate the bottom uh, it seems to be some kind of fiberglass silicone sheeting the instructions really don't say I did look at the instructions a bit on the uh, vacuum pump it's been a long time since I've used a vacuum pump, it is an oil-based pump. Most, um, at least I'm, that I'm familiar with, vacuum pumps are, because obviously you need something to pull the vacuum against, and sort of that's the reason, uh, part of the reason I'm assuming for the oil. I'm not a vacuum pump expert. However, there's a little window back here to show you how much to fill it. Also, one of the things that it warns against is if you draw a vacuum uh, or a substantial vacuum, and then you turn the pump off, you lock this you should not re-engage the pump again against that vacuum and I've also read on the internet what that does is will pull the oil back into um, the uh, chamber so again the idea is let it run pull it down shut it down and then if you want to redraw vacuum you have to bring it back up then start it back, back pump back running and then draw the vacuum back down again uh, at least that's what it says in the manual. So, uh, if you guys know better, let me know in the comments below. Uh, so, this is kind of what you get now. I want to spend a few minutes actually talking about my logic uh, behind this for drying filament. 
So I, I did a lot of homework and I saw that a lot of people were using the food dryers or dehydrators and it really got me to thinking and, and a piece of that kind of puzzled me. So I'm going to pull this out of here. So now one of the things you notice this spool is, is wound and, and while the surface is kind of loose and that's where probably most of the moisture is, uh, it, it, it's probably also permeated deep down where it's tight. Now, the way that the food dryer works is it, it circulates, you know, warm, dry air, you know, it excites the water, water evaporates, water is removed. Uh, but in, unless it's getting down to the center of this, which I don't see how you're going to get enough air circulation down to the center of this, um, you know how is that going to work how is that really going to dry the center of the filament now I've seen some guys do some ingenious things where they keep it in the dryer and feed the filament out and that's kind of okay too I think that's you know on a coolness factor high but I don't think it's it's a high practicality factor uh, so with this what I'm thinking is that after I draw a vacuum or by drawing a vacuum I'm going to pull all the water out no matter how deeply embedded it is in this filament and also I should be able to do it much quicker um, you know because this is one of the things I was reading you know it takes six seven hours in the uh, in the air dryers and that kind of stuff but I would have to think that within a very very short period of time and I have to snicker uh, as I say that, it should draw the water out again because it's a vacuum. Now, I'll do some tests, um, you know, because basically when you lower the atmospheric pressure, water boils at a lower temperature. And I'll put up a chart, and as you can see, when you start pulling it down to around 29 or greater inches, I, I mean, water starts boiling even at one degree. So, um, you know you really don't even have to apply heat because that's the other thing I have to snicker I've seen on the internet some other folks doing this and they have heaters for this now for doing resin yes I've seen heaters placed on the bottom uh, but one of the things to keep in mind is when you draw a vacuum there's nothing to transfer the heat except physical contact so the piece is if you have the resin say in a plastic container and you set it on the set it on the bottom of this what's going to happen is if you have a heating element attached to the bottom of this it's going to warm up this metal container the metal container touching the plastic container and here is going to warm it up and then the plastic container is going to warm up the resin there's no air in here to transfer the heat this is acting like a thermos bottle and for those younger folks out there probably don't remember what a vacuum bottle is or a vacuum thermos bottle but that's what we used to have in the olden days uh, to keep our soup our coffee and that kind of stuff either hot or cold primarily hot so that's one of the things to kind of keep in mind about this I don't understand and plus because if you're drawing down to 29 uh, plus inches of mercury why do you need to heat it? I mean, water will evaporate, will boil, you know, far below that. So, uh, again, we're going to experiment a little bit with this, but I wanted to share some of my thinking and ideas, and if you guys have experimented with this, let me know. I also don't know, I've seen guys put desiccant in here uh, to absorb the, the water. I don't know if that's really needed um, for a couple different reasons. One, this is not going to, filament is not typically going to absorb a ton of water. I mean, I, I've heard guys do experimentation and we'll, we'll try to replicate some of those where a spool will hold maybe a gram of water. Uh, it's not a lot. So the, the point is, is, you know, again, when you turn it into a, basically it's, it's gaseous state into a vapor and suck it out, I mean, what's, you know, left to be absorbed. So I really don't understand some of those pieces. So we may have to experiment with, with some of this. Also, um, they were mentioning that, uh, you know, they reconstitute the desiccant by putting it into an oven and heating it up again. Uh, but again, I would think if it was in the vacuum chamber, again, any water in the desiccant would, um, be removed and we'll experiment with that in a future video too so we'll, we'll do a couple different things with this uh, experimenting uh, with regards to filament and see what happens so I'm gonna have a couple different types of filament now my basement here that I have my workshop in right now is not uh, too humid it's winter time so the air is pretty dry um, so one of the things I'm gonna focus on is, is my nylon I know that's kinda damp uh, because it soaks up water like a sponge 
um, but we'll see how it goes so anyways I'll have links for this down below. The cost of this was really affordable. And one of the final things I want to touch on before I forget is why did I buy this versus make my own? Uh, basically, it was cheaper buying it. Um, number one, I needed a vacuum pump. Um, so I didn't have a vacuum pump. So I'd had to build the chamber. I'd had to go find a pot like this. I'd had to buy a valve, I mean a gauge, a valve, get a piece of plexiglass, spend the time cutting it. Basically, for about 150 bucks, I got this off eBay. It's all said and it done. Five gallon, you know, again, pan. I know it's going to handle it. This is this is very sturdy. This is actually pretty heavy, guys. You know, I've seen a couple of folks uh, go and buy cooking pots and make their own, and I, you know, watched them crumble on on YouTube. And again, it gets views, but it's not practical. So I thought this was a, a more practical way to go, and also a little bit safer way to go too. Because again, you're drawing a vacuum here. Um, you can have an implosion, things can happen, so I just felt a little bit better going in this direction. So, again, I'll have links to this down below if you're interested in it. Uh, this is a single stage pump, not a two stage pump, uh, three cubic feet per minute. I thought this was more than enough for, again, what I'm going to do. I could have went up to for another 50 bucks, gone to a five cubic foot per minute, but I didn't see why I spend the 50 bucks. Um, also, I'm sure that, that there are probably pumps with better duty cycles. Since this is sort of a hobby thing, I don't see, again, where I need that great of a duty cycle. So uh, I think 150 was was a real good investment. And then I get kind of double use out of it because I can also use this for resin casting. So again, hopefully you found it interesting. If you did, don't forget the bell icon over there. It's to remind you to go down and hit that bell button down there. Get those little parens around it so you're notified when I release new content. Swag shop is going to be up in the upper corner. Hey, check out the swag up there. And we'll see you guys in the next video where we draw some vacuum. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.